What's going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're gonna jump back over to Marvel Comics and we're gonna pick up with another Marvel color book. Now, what I mean by that is that in the early to mid 2000s, Jeff Loeb and Tim Seld worked together on four different books and each book had a color come after a character name for their title. For example, Spider-Man Blue, Hulk Gray, and Captain America White. Well, today we're going to cover Daredevil Yellow. And just like the others, this is a love letter to a character that had died in the past for Daredevil. So, if you do like today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So the opening of this book tells us that this is Daredevil thinking about Karen Page. For the ones out there who don't know who Karen Page is, she was the lover for Daredevil. He had others, but she was the one who died and it really messed him up. To the point that after some time had passed since her death, he still struggled to move on with his life. He started to act differently. And of course, his best friend Foggy began to worry about him. Foggy tells him that maybe he should write a letter to Karen Page. Even though she is dead, he can write a letter as a way to express how he is feeling. Also hoping that it will help him move on with his life. This is going to be a retelling on how he met Karen Page. So we jump back in time to where Matt Murdock and Foggy Nelson were in college. Foggy is reading a paper about how great Matt Murdock's father is in boxing, telling us that his dad was popular. He was big around town. There is even a point where Jack Murdock takes Foggy and Matt out to dinner. We see him being able to interact with anybody. He is able to take Matt and Foggy out to a nice place. By this point, Matt is blind and has his enhanced senses. But of course, he is not Daredevil yet. Because remember, when it comes to Matt becoming Daredevil, Jack Murdock plays a very important role in that process. Jeff Loeb doesn't waste any time by getting us to the point that will make Matt Murdock become Daredevil, where we pick up with Jack Murdock having another one of his boxing matches, except when they get the chance to get a break, you have Jack Murdock manager tell him to take a dive, meaning that lose the fight on purpose because this is where we learn that the reason why Jack Murdoch is this famous boxer in the city is because there is this gangster named Fixer who would fix the matches to easily give Jack Murdoch wins. Now Jack Murdoch says he is not going to lose this match because his son Matt and his best friend Foggy are out there watching, meaning that he has to win this match, which he does win by giving the other guy a quick combo of punches. Now everyone is happy except of course the fixer. This leads us into the sad moment that made Matt Murdock begin the path of becoming Daredevil. It all started with the fact that his father was killed. Matt tell us that he was at home when he heard the gunshot. He just knew somehow that it was his father that was shot. So he leaves the apartment, runs down the street to see that someone shot his father in the head. The last person Daredevil had in his life was technically family is now gone. The one person he looked up to as well. So again, this is the part that led Matt to become Daredevil. 
what really pushes him even farther into the path of becoming Daredevil is when we see the court session, where you have the two men who are responsible for the killing of Jack Murdock. At first, it seems that they are about to go to jail until their lawyer points out that no murder weapon has been found. They have alibis for their whereabouts, and the lawyer tricks the judge by making the judge think about why would these two men spend so much money into making Jack Murdock into a champion, only to end up killing him. So, the case get dismissed, so the men who killed Jack Murdoch get to walk away free. Some time has passed by and we see that Matt and Foggy have both graduated from university. Of course, Foggy wants to begin to put their law firm together right at this moment. Except for Matt, he has a different plan and we see him go home and put together the classic daredevil outfit. This is the same one he wore in the early days of Marvel Comics, the yellow and red, but this is him becoming the character we all love and know him as. Of course, the second chapter opens up with Daredevil going after some of the men of the Fixer, trying to locate where they are at. And this is going to be the moment the city of New York learns about Daredevil. Well, not right here, because he's just beating up some of the thugs who work for the Fixer and the Fixer's partner. He is trying his best to find them. This is his only lead. You do have the men of the Fixer tell Daredevil that he will be here any minute now. Literally a second later, the Fixer does appear and his partner Slade. They tried their best to shoot down Daredevil hoping to stop him. Again, this is the first time Matt Murdock has been out in the world as Daredevil. This leads into the moment you have Daredevil being able to beat down on Slade except he wants to use fear as a way to make Slade do what he wants to do, which is to go and tell the truth about killing his father. He starts with Slade first by making him scared and bringing up what the lawyer said way back then, how there was no murder weapon found. Well, there were some kind of nuts found around there, and Slade ate those kind of nuts. After explaining that, you have Daredevil tell him to go and testify for what he did. The Fixer, though, was able to run away while Daredevil was basically scaring the mess out of Slade, except Daredevil was able to catch up to the Fixer easily, and this chase goes all over the town. To the point, we see the Fixer try to run into the subway, hoping to lose Daredevil down there. For the Fixer, it won't be that easy, though since Daredevil is on a mission to give his father justice. So Daredevil literally chases Fixer all the way into the tunnels, thinking that he's about to get his hand on the Fixer, only to see the Fixer fall to the ground and die because the Fixer had a heart attack. Now after the Fixer has died, you have the police arrive at the scene of the crime. This is why I kept saying this is the moment the world finds out about Daredevil because to the cops all they see is some man in a Daredevil outfit telling them that the man he is holding in his hand just died from a heart attack and Daredevil leaves like it was no big deal what just happened. After that we finally get to the point of what this whole book is about. Remember that this is Daredevil writing a love letter to Karen Page, who was the recent lover of Daredevil when this book came out. She died, her death is affecting him big time in the present day. So he is writing the love letter to explain what made him Daredevil, why he kept pushing to go down that path. While being Daredevil, he met Karen Page 
and she played an important role when it came to him sticking around as Daredevil. So at this moment, we see the Foggy Nelson was busy all day trying to find assistant for him and Matt's law firm. After interviewing so many different people, of course, he was unable to find one. When Matt walks in, well, Foggy did find one, and that person being Karen Page, saying this is the first time Matt and Karen had met. So after some time has passed by, we see that Matt, Foggy, and Karen are confronted by the Fantastic Four. Remember that the Fantastic Four came a little bit before Daredevil came around in comics. This is just him building some form of a bond between Reed Richards and Matt Murdock. Honestly, this is just a moment that will put Matt and Foggy on the map when it comes to lawyers looking for work. After the Fantastic Four leave, you have Foggy and Matt decide to celebrate the fact that they were able to get some work with the Fantastic Four. And you have Foggy suggest that they go to one of their old college bars to celebrate, one of those beatdown ones. We get a moment where we see Daredevil celebrating the idea of being a hero now. How he thinks about being on the same list of popular heroes in the world, like Thor or even Iron Man as well. Then he tells us how Karen Page stays on his mind, how when he thinks about her, he feels happy and just wanted to spend some more time with her, like he's about to do tonight. Now remember that Karen Page and Matt are not hanging out alone. They are with Foggy as well. And you can see here that Foggy is showing that he is interested in Karen Page. Except you can see here that Karen Page is not slightly interested in Foggy, which sucks for the man. But then you have the three of them get confronted by some guys who were trying to hustle them in a game of pool thinking that with Matt being blind, that they'll be able to get some money out of Foggy, Karen, and Matt. And you have Matt at first act like he can't play pool since he is blind. Except that is when you have Matt show them up by beating them in their own game, which of course, they were able to get some money out of these guys very easily. Of course, these guys do get upset with the fact that they had just lost money from Matt Murdock. So when Matt Murdock sends Karen and Foggy home in a taxi, that is when the guys appear behind him and ready to fight. Again, this is just a moment to show Daredevil abilities off. While fighting against these guys, you have Matt thinking back about what his father told him. That his father told him to never lead with his left. Because if you do, then your opponent knows your moves right off the bat. Somehow, that led into him thinking about Karen. How he did not want to tell her right off the bat about how he feels about her. After he beat these guys down, he does leave. Now you have Matt go meet Slade in person. Remember, this is the man who actually shot Jack Murdock. He worked for the Fixer, the one who had a heart attack. But then you have Matt ask Slade who the Fixer actually worked for, which you have Slade tell Matt that he will not give that information up. To Matt, that is strange because Slade should not be afraid to die since he is on death row for killing Matt's father. Where you have Slade tell Matt that he will not give that information up because the man who the Fixer and Slade worked for would actually end up killing Slade's children. So Matt has to leave without getting that information. When Matt gets back to his office with Foggy, that is when we are introduced to some random lady. This lady tells Matt and Foggy that she came here for their help because someone is after them. Foggy tries to comfort her, but unfortunately, she freaks out when she sees Matt and runs out of the room. Now, with Matt's abilities, he was able to tell that she was lying about something. He does not know what, but something is off about her. 
After some time has passed by, we then see everyone working for the night in Matt and Foggy's office. That is when we see someone walking up the stairs and walks right into the office of Matt Murdock, letting us know that Jeff Loeb is bringing in another character from the Daredevil comics. We do get introduced to the Owl. We talk about the Owl before. He is basically a mutant who has Owl's abilities. Also, he is a big on trying to become a big kingpin in New York. Now, the first half of Chapter 4 is more of Daredevil fighting against Electro. And I know what you are thinking. Usually, Electro is a Spider-Man villain. But to help build up the rogue gallery for Daredevil, Daredevil had actually battled against Electro before in his own comics. This is Jeff Lowe stating that this is the first time Electro and Daredevil have met in Marvel Comics. The reason why Daredevil and Electro are fighting is because when Matt Murdock went to the Baxter building to meet up with Reed Richards, because remember that Reed Richards had hired Matt Murdock to help out with some legal work, well, Matt Murdock saw Electro in there and of course, the Fantastic Four were not there. So he thought, you know what, let me handle this situation. So of course, you have Daredevil and Electro basically fight it out all over the city. And while he is fighting against Electro, someone who is a super villain, someone who can actually kill him very easily, while fighting against Electro, all he can think about is literally Karen Page, the girl he loves so much. Well, also the fact about him being up there on the list of superheroes if he takes down Electro. Karen Page is on his mind, but at the same time about him being a superhero. This battle does end with Daredevil being able to beat down on Electro and the day is saved. So you have Daredevil getting praised by some of the ladies who was there at the scene of the fight. Shifting the focus back on Karen Page again, we see her looking out of the window when Daredevil swings by the building, which of course excites her. But we see that Foggy Nelson does not like the idea of Karen Page getting excited about another man. Then you have Matt walk in and they continue to talk about Matt Murdock's alter ego. This begins a scene where you have Matt and Foggy kind of trying to learn more about Karen Page. Starting with the fact that she has a boyfriend. Of course, she tells them no, which excites the both of them. Now they know that she is single. You have Foggy ask about bowling, hoping to have some alone time with Karen, except Matt agrees to go with them as well. Skipping over to bowling night, this is of course supposed to be a night for Foggy and Karen Page, except Matt is there, and you have Matt pretend that he can bowl since he is blind, as a way to get close to Karen Page. Now this whole time, Matt knows that Foggy has feelings for Karen. He must have, but it is him thinking of foggy feelings for Karen Page just as a small crush. We're going to see Matt is wrong about how foggy feels for Karen, but we do see that Matt plans work and there is a brief moment that he is close with Karen Page. Of course, Foggy is not happy about that. Getting back to Slade, remember, since Matt captured him for killing Jack Murdock, Slade is on death row, so it is his time to die. Matt was invited mainly because this is the man who killed his father. Matt at first thought that he was going to enjoy this scene, watch the man who killed his father die except it didn't. It actually bothered him. And we learned that after the death of Jack Murdoch, Matt Murdoch never moved out of the home of Jack Murdoch. It was his way to hold on to a piece of his father, especially the chair that his father always sat in. When Matt Murdoch gets back to his office that he shares with Foggy, he runs into Foggy that is pacing around the office. 
Foggy tells Matt two things. The first being that he sent Karen Page to the office of the owl, apparently to gather some paperwork. But he tells Matt that he plans to propose to Karen Page, which to me is a big skip in steps of relationships when it comes to him and Karen Page. Here we are though. Foggy Nelson is going to propose to Karen Page. With the fifth chapter, we see that some time has passed by, meaning that we are at a point where Matt and Foggy both realize that Karen Page is missing. Remember, she was sent by Foggy over the office of the Owl to take care of some paperwork, only to realize that she never came back. So we see Matt standing on top of a building and trying to use his enhanced abilities to hopefully locate where Karen Page is at. This is to show how much Matt cares for Karen and also how powerful Matt enhanced abilities are. Because even though he is hearing a city full of people and in fact objects that are making sounds as well, he was able to pinpoint his hearing to listen out for Karen Page. When he hears her, this man runs towards her in a hurry. Now the reason why he was able to hear Karen is because she is talking to another woman and we see that Karen is locked up in a cage. Now the woman Karen is talking to is actually the same woman we saw earlier who came to Foggy and Matt's office looking for help. But when Matt walked in, she ran away. So we see that she was working for the owl and she basically tricked Karen in a way to get Karen Page locked up. Of course, after the lady leaves, that is when Matt Murdock appears as Daredevil to save Karen from the cage, where you have him show off a little bit by bending the bars with his hands. Then he slowly carries her down so it seems like a sweet moment. And even when he called Karen by her name, she is so in love with Daredevil that with him knowing her name, she does not think about how Daredevil knows her name. To her, she thinks he may have overheard her name being called. Sadly though, you have Matt tell her to leave now because the owl has returned to the warehouse. So this is where we get the first fight between Daredevil and the owl. Now Daredevil doesn't win this battle like he did when he fought against Electro, except this time he loses this fight. Matter of fact, there are only a couple of moments where it seems like Daredevil might have a chance to win this battle. Sadly, he doesn't. And there is a moment where it seems like the Owl might go ahead and kill Daredevil, only to see Daredevil being able to escape the chokehold that the Owl had on Daredevil, only to say that there will be a rematch because this battle ended in a draw. After all of that, we see Matt Murdock and Karen Page talking about how Matt's alter ego, Daredevil, saved her life. Either way, this is a big moment because as they are reacting out the different fight moves that she saw Daredevil do, there is a moment where she lands in the arms of Matt Murdock, where you can see the affection between the two of them, and this is some bad timing because as soon as it happens, that is when Foggy Nelson walks into the office. Remember, he was planning on proposing to Karen Page, but now seeing how she feels and acts around Matt, he knows that Matt Murdock is the guy she wants to be with, so he leaves upset. With some more time passed by, we see that in the office of Foggy Nelson and Matt Murdock, we can see Karen and Matt showing their affection towards one another in the open, where Foggy can clearly tell they really do like each other. With the phone ringing, Matt and Karen are not answering it because they are flirting with one another, and you have Foggy Nelson answer the phone instead. This is the moment you have Foggy Nelson tell us that Matt and Foggy just got hired to represent the Purple Man. Now that name should sound familiar to you if you have watched 
Jessica Jones on Netflix or read the comics that are based on the character Jessica Jones. Either way, you have Matt can tell that there is some tension in the room between him and Foggy. So he decides to go ahead and head down and meet their new client. Except you have Karen Page also agree to go as well so she can spend some more time with Matt. Now, the purple man has the ability to control people literally by looking at them. Well, his powers had varied over the years. Sometimes his powers work around the idea of him just being there or he has to be looking at them. Either way, with Matt bringing Karen Page here, he was able to take control of her and the police officers to get him out of prison. When the purple man gets outside, Matt has changed into his daredevil outfit, hoping to stop the purple man. On to have the purple man use more police officers and have them shoot at daredevil to keep him busy so he can escape. So you have the purple man take Karen Page to a nearby hotel to of course use his powers for horrible things where he thinks that he's in the clear now since Daredevil is nowhere to be seen. Except that is when Daredevil appears in the room and begins the process of beating down on the Purple Man. Now you have Purple Man use Karen Page as a way to distract Daredevil by making her jump out of the window. So Daredevil has to go and save her which he does. But when he does, they begin to talk more and when they do talk, it continues the idea of Karen Page falling in love with Daredevil. Now after their conversation, you have Daredevil beat up Purple Man and hand him over to the police and leave. To wind down the story, you have Matt and Foggy talking in his office again, and this time about Karen, where you have Foggy telling Matt that he is not going to chase after Karen anymore, that he actually hated Matt because Matt was taking the girl he wanted. But of course, their friendship should not be destroyed because of a lady. Except when Foggy tries to call a truce, that is when you have Karen Page walk in and tell them that she has a date with Daredevil. Meaning that she lost feelings for both Matt and Foggy because she is in love with Daredevil. Finally, you have the book closed with Daredevil looking at what he did with some of his money in the present day. Before I tell you what he did, you have Daredevil tell us how much he misses both his father and Karen Page. But writing these letters actually helped him move forward with his life. We see that with his money, he had reopened his father's old gym again. So the book closes on that point right there. And this is where we are going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. See y'all next time. Later.